This is Twit. So AI, uh, there's two different kinds of AI, the, the uh, narrow AI and the other one. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between those two? Sure. So general AI is the uh, is the Hollywood image of AI. So that's the Terminator. That's the singularity. That's the robots that are going to take over the world. That's like anything that's about uh, making a little uh, brain inside the computer, making the computer sentient somehow. Uh, that's androids. And that's all imaginary. Narrow AI is actually what we have. Narrow AI is real. And narrow AI is just math. It's very, very beautiful math. It's gorgeous and complicated uh, and high level math, but it's just math. Uh, it's basically a computational statistics on steroids. And so it's really important to keep in mind the distinction between narrow and general AI, because when you start imagining, oh, well, the Hollywood image of AI you know, is, is real, then we kind of get confused, right? So you need to be, you need to make sure in conversations about AI that you and the person you're talking to are actually talking about the same thing. Because if you're talking about uh, making the Terminator and I'm talking about uh, predicting uh, someone's, uh, predicting whether or not somebody is going to repay their mortgage and you know making a decision on a loan, those are two totally different things. And we need to make sure that we are talking about the same thing so that we can be on common ground, especially when we're talking about how to make policy. And people also uh, now use the term machine learning and AI interchangeably, and you say that's wrong as well. Oh yeah, so this is one of the things that I find super interesting. So as, as a writer, I'm really interested in language. And so, uh, but then as a computer scientist, I'm also very interested in precision. I guess as a writer, I'm interested in precision around language as well. Uh, but so, Artificial intelligence is a subfield of computer science, the same way that algebra is a subfield of mathematics. And inside the field of artificial intelligence, uh, there are other subfields. Okay, so machine learning is one subfield of artificial intelligence. Uh, natural language processing is another subfield. Expert systems is another field. Uh, but machine learning is the one that's most popular right now. And so most of the time when people say, oh, I'm using AI for business, what they actually mean is that they're using machine learning for business. And so the two terms have become confused. But the other really interesting thing here is the implications of the term artificial intelligence. It makes it sound like there's a little brain inside the computer. Same thing with machine learning. Even though I absolutely know with all of my brain and all of my heart that there is nothing sentient inside this machine. When I hear machine learning, I still think, oh, the machine is maybe learning the way that a human being does, and that is not true. So there's a lot of power in language, and we have to make sure that uh, we respect the fact that uh, language creep happens uh, and that we still recognize that we're talking about math when we're talking about machine learning. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to, like, when you, you know, when you hear that a computer has beaten a chess master or go master, it's hard to not sort of imagine, like, that they went through the same things that the, the, the chess or go master did, just trying really hard until they got it right <laughs> and working really hard. And that's that's not true. You, you go into detail kind of about how that works and, and why they why people use games uh, as a uh, barometer of how well AI is doing. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. The people who make uh, who make computer programs and who make uh, machine learning algorithms and who do artificial intelligence, uh, there's been kind of a, a social thing that's happened inside those fields where uh, most of the people who are in the field really, really like playing games. And they really, really like playing games like chess. And so it came to be that that small and homogeneous group of people decided that, oh, Smart people play chess. And therefore, if we're going to make a computer that's smart, 
the computer is going to play chess. And if it wins at chess, then it must be the smartest and it must be artificially intelligent, which is not true. But uh, it explains why uh, there's been so much effort at getting computers to play chess. I mean, first it was uh, first it was tic-tac-toe uh, that computers mastered, and then it was checkers, and then it was chess, and then it was go. And each one of these games is incrementally harder, and it takes decades to figure out how to get a computer to uh, to win at these games, at these zero-sum games. Uh, and it's a pretty remarkable achievement. But one of the things that I find so interesting about it is that it's about human achievement. So uh, in the book, I go through uh, what it took to get the computer to beat the human expert at Go. And what happened was people play computer Go all the time. Like there are thousands and thousands and thousands of games of computer Go happening at any given moment. And people have been training for Go tournaments by playing computer Go for years and years. And all of that data gets captured and it gets represented in data sets, right? So we have millions of hours of recorded data on uh, people who are bad and people who are good uh, playing Go all over the world. And so we have all of these permutations. So what the uh, computer scientists did was they took all of that data and they plunked it into the computer uh, and they said, computer, uh, pick your strategy based on the strategies that have been successful in this data set. And there's actually so much data now that, yes, it is possible to beat the best human Go player. But it's not about the computer using its own strategy that it came up with. It's about the computer using strategies that were created by the best Go players in the world. Mm. So, so is there... Is a really, go ahead. Oh, well, so which I think is a really uh, interesting phenomenon because we imagine that the computer is autonomously doing something, right? Like we imagine that the computer has been programmed to make these, uh, these decisions on its own. But actually, no, it's a totally different paradigm. And uh, it relies on something that uh, is called the unreasonable effectiveness of data. So if you have enough data, you can get a computer to make pretty uh, reasonably accurate guesses about what is going to happen next in very, very highly constrained situations. And the people who are writing these algorithms don't really understand what's going on in the black box and they can't really express what's going on in the black box. They just know that it works, right? So the unreasonable effectiveness of data describes this phenomenon. Mm 